Hey, what's up, Reefers? I f***ed up. It's a nice day outside, so I figured we will take things outdoor. Now, for the past month, month and a half or so, the 45-gallon tank has been going a little bit downhill, especially with the SPS and some of the LPS. And for the longest time, I could not figure out why. So I started posting my water test results online, and thankfully I did that because my friend Jim, uh, Telegram, on Instagram, he, he pointed something out. He was like, wait a minute, um, you recently did a water change, and within one day, the elk shot up. Have you ever tested the elk level, alkalinity level of the mixed water? I have not, and I never paid attention to it. Because in the past, I would use reef crystal. First, instant notion, and then reef crystal. And at the same time, I would be dosing kelp, kelp water, uh, in order to boost the um, alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium level. But I never really paid too much attention to the test. Because as long as they're within the range, I figure it's okay. As I flip back, I notice that you're right. Um, my elk level seems to be going higher and higher and then in much faster frequency recently. So I went ahead and tested the salt, freshly mixed salt from Red Sea Coral Pro. And the elk turned, uh, came back as 13. That was a shocker. At first I thought, okay, maybe my batch of salt was wrong. But as I look at the bucket, it actually says up here, freshly mixed elk at 35, PPT salinities should be 12.3 to 12.7. So the salt that I use is actually within range, it's just that I did not pay attention. Meaning that I'm so used to using other salt that has a um, lower elk level that I kept dosing um, calc water without realizing that I have more than enough and I just keep adding more to it. And one thing I do is I, I'm good at grinding, meaning that if I find something wrong, I'll do whatever I can to fix it. And that actually causes this issue as well. As I start seeing that the corals are not doing well, I was like, okay, number one thing to do when something is not doing, going right in the tank is do water change, right? And every single time I use water change, I use this salt, meaning that I keep adding more elk, calcium, and magnesium to the tank. So the first thing I did was I just continue using dosing kelp. And the second thing I did is that um, I order new salts because I, I do want to be able to dose in order to control the, um, the amount of different elements or trace elements in my tank. So I went ahead and ordered a box of the Fritz uh, RPM. The level is much more of what I was expecting. And uh, I'll be using the salt and then I will probably st uh, start a dosing regimen. But for now, I'm waiting for the level to come down. Um, I think two days ago it was about 9 um, dKH. And now it's about 7.6 dKH, so it has come down already. Um, but the calcium and magnesium is still way high. So I'm going to start doing small level of water changes with the um, Fritz salts and then we'll go from there. At the same time, I also ordered a uh, Trident test. I have not sent in the test yet. I want the water to kind of stabilize first and then send it in to make sure this recent issue is only caused by a, the elk swing and not by something else that's happening in the tank. So that is the situation with the 45 gallon tank right now. Um, I think we probably have identified the issue and we will see if that solved the problem. Um, once again, if you are using Red Sea Core Pro Salt, make sure you know that it has a uh, pretty elevated levels on pretty much everything, and which is great uh, if you know what you're getting into. Uh, for me, I just keep hearing that this salt is great. I went right into it without reading too much into it. And at the same time, I did not do a test um, when I first mix the salt for the first time. And that's one thing I'll, I'm doing with the uh, fridge salts. Once again, thank you, Jim, for pointing out the uh, the difference in the elk level between water change and that really, um, that's uh, that kind of untied the knot that has been plaguing this tank. Thank you, and I will keep you guys posted. All right, guys, I know this looks bad, but actually it's already a lot better. Uh, it has been about two and a half days since I switched over to the uh, fridge salts, and I have been doing, I did two water change already. It was like 30% water change, and already I'm seeing a difference. It still looks really pale, but the color is definitely returning. And I can't... I also, look at the LPS. They actually open up larger now compared to a couple days ago. A couple days ago, they, they, sh they have shrunken. And I was seriously worried. And check out the gold hammer. Finally, it's uh, getting large again. And the real in indicator here, because I gave the uh, Space Invader away to save it, is that this green Manipora, it was pale white just a couple days ago. Now, it's, it's a little, little bit of green coming back. All right guys, so we are on day three using the uh, Fritz salts, uh, the Fritz LPM salts. 
And solar things are looking great. I've been doing water tests every morning, um, and the outcast stabilized at I think like 7.8 ish. Um, everything everything looks good. I haven't tested calcium and magnesium yet because I figure I'm still kind of like trying to get all the old water out. So it's not worth testing it for now. But so far, all the corals has responded really, really positively. Look at all the LPS. This is day three using the salts. They've all opened up again, right? Look at the gold hammer. I haven't seen it like this in a long time. And especially, oh man, look, I guess they're stinging each other. Especially look at the green manipora. If you remember the older video, it's essentially pale, but now the color is coming back relatively quickly. And check out the manipora cap. Even though it still has a lot of, um, it's still looking really pale and bald, has some bald spots. Same thing with the one on the wall. But it's already a lot better than before, so I'm really happy. Like you see the rims, right? The color's coming back, uh, so I'm, I'm so happy. So I think the elks, the elevated elk level, as well as the big swing, uh, while I was using the uh, Red Sea Coral Pro Salt and those in calc at the same time, that really did a number on the tank. And that's totally my fault for not checking the, well, number one, not reading a label carefully because it did say that it has elevated, um, ele uh, elevated levels. And the second, I did not test the salt when I first got it. So that was my mistake. So lesson learned. Now I'm using fruit salts. All the level are consistently uh, at a lower level. So I'm actually gonna start dosing. I'm gonna experiment with dosing. So after these water change, I believe that the, the level has um, is pretty much stabilized for the last two or three days. I'm gonna check tomorrow morning again and we'll go from there. But I think after this water change, I should be pretty much set in terms of like replacing all the old water. Granted, you, <laughs> granted every time I and you uh, do a water change, you kind of dilute whatever's in there. So it's not, I'm not taking out just the old water, but I'm comfortable enough that I can, after this water change, I can just let it run for like a week or two without doing another water change. All right, so I had been dosing the BLS soda ash for the last two and a half days in order to raise the alkalinity. So I started out with 6.8, and now today I just measured it's at 8.7 right now. I kind of overshot a little bit. I was aiming for about 8.3, 8.4 but I may just let the level slowly drop by itself. Um, so I'm gonna let it rest for about a day and I'm gonna install the doser. And then we're gonna fine tune the amounts we dose each day. I'm probably gonna start with half portion first just to make sure I don't overdose. But uh, yeah, things are looking really good. Look at the LPS, they are once again really happy. So I actually did a test. Um, I was playing around with the, uh, the level of elk, uh, alkalinity supplement I add. And whenever it dips below, I say about seven, the LPS started looking pretty sad. And whenever I get into the eight range, then it looks really happy. So I'm gonna target 8.3 and try to shoot for that and we will see how it goes. Ah, super exciting. Hey, what's up Reefers? So it has been about two weeks since I've switched over to the Fritz salts and started dosing. And I wanna show you the results. Let's take a look here. So this is the tank right now. Things have started recovering. The SPS I was most worried about is the Manipori cap. As you can see, there's still some pale spot, but for the most part, the color is starting to intensify and coming back, which I'm really happy about. Now sliding down here, this is my indicator coral, green encrusting Manipora, and thankfully the color is coming back as well. And to the left side of the tank, we got our LPS garden. And things are once again looking decent. So no complaints there. Unfortunately, the 24K Lepto something, um, I think the top portion is dead. That's uh, totally bleached out. However, the side and the bottom is still a vibrant gold. So I'm hoping that over time, it's gonna recolonize the dead portion. But coming back up here, there's uh, no issue with the other SPS, but uh, check this out, sneak peek. This is a uh, flower pot coral or gonipora that Wesley hooked me up with. I got a couple frags, sent two over to Sally, I kept two. Um, I'm trying to find a place to fit them. So we will see, but I'll talk about these guys in a future video. So overall, the tank is in recovery mode and things has been pretty stable. I have been doing water tests every day uh, as I'm dialing the dosing in. Uh, I use the HANA alkalinity checker, awesome, awesome checker. And I've been using it so much that uh, this is actually the second refill that I had to buy already. But it's okay because I found a place that sell these guys for $6.99 versus like 
it's like what, like almost $20 on Amazon, which is highway robbery considering that unit is 49. So seven bucks with these, I went through like, this is like the second, second refill already. And, and as I mentioned, I started dosing. I'm using the JBAL four channel doser and this is like $70 and it has phenomenal review. Uh, many people like it and it seems really reliable so I went ahead and got it and I got a uh, I forgot what brand it is actually there are a lot of brands that sell the same same container uh, so I went with one of the cheapest one I think it was about $49 and it's um, there are some like nice DIY options but I, <laughs> I don't trust myself that much so I went ahead and got this and uh, it's, it's, it looks nice quality is there so I'm dosing alkalinity uh, for the alkalinity and calcium two parts and I got them from BLS and here, let me show you guys. So I got them from BLS and they are super easy to mix together and here's uh, all the extra stuff I got. I actually got a lot, of a lot of packs, a lot of portions. Each of those um, makes one of these jugs. So this is gonna last me a while. So as I mentioned, it took it took a few days to dial it in to know exactly what I need to dose and um, I think I got the alkalinity kind of locked down already. Uh, calcium, I'm gonna just dose the equal parts, right? And then uh, as needed, I may adjust it. I don't know, but I think you're supposed to do like equal parts. I gotta do a little bit more research. Again, I'm totally new to these uh, water chemistry and dosing. So I'm learning along with some of you guys. But the good thing from all this is that they also forced me to kind of organize. Before, before like, uh, before today, or before this video, that part is kind of like my shame because it's such a mess, it's a huge mess of wires. But this forced me to get a shelf, you know, kind of lay things out a little bit cleaner. And over there, it used to be like a cluster, a cluster of crap as well. But also, still a cluster of crap, but at least it's an organized cluster of crap. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, okay, well, let me flip it back. So, that has been what has been going on with the 45 gallon tank. I did not talk about it too much because I want to wait until I see which direction this tank goes uh, before I make a video. And uh, I'm really thankful that it is on the road to recovery. Um, again, thank you to all of you guys who kind of gave me different ideas to try out to figure out what's wrong with the tank and then after that gave me a different idea of how to set up dosing. Um, I'm really sad that you just, it really hurted the Space Invader Pectinia and I'm really thankful that Jim was able to take it off my hand because without a doubt I'm sure it would have been dead. It was going downhill fast and he was able to save it. So once again, thank you so much. Uh, with that said, I guess like from this point forward, I'm gonna start working a little bit more with water chemistry and it actually, it's actually pretty interesting because I like doing photography. So there's the aperture shutter speed and ISO's uh, relationship, the triangle of relationship. And this is kind of similar. It's like alkalinity, calcium and magnesium. They seem to have some kind of interplay as well. So this is, I feel like once I get it, I'll get it. But until then, it's kind of like, wait, what's going on? So I'm slowly getting to this, that point. All right, well, with that said, this video is long enough already. Um, <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. This, this video consists of a lot of me just rambling. I'm, I'm really sorry. And let me know if you actually watched the entire video. Then I know you're like a hardcore reef squad and I give you props. And thank you so much for watching this until the end. With that said, I'll see you next week and have a great weekend. Talk to you guys later.